Hello, and welcome to another installment of Dear Celestron. I'm Lance Lucero, Celestron's product manager for astronomy, and I'm here to answer your questions. Today's question is about the great conjunction of 2020 uh, that is happening on December 21st. Uh, and I'm here to describe what it is and how to view it. First of all, what is the great conjunction? A conjunction occurs when any two celestial objects in the sky are very, very close together. This is commonly seen with the Moon and Venus, when you see them in either the early morning sky or the evening sky when they're hanging out together just a few degrees apart. Uh, that is called a conjunction. But the great conjunction of 2020 is going to involve Jupiter and Saturn. And let me tell you, it's going to be spectacular. On the evening of December 21st, Saturn and Jupiter are going to appear one-tenth of a degree apart. To put that in perspective, the full moon is half a degree wide, so it's going to be approximately one-fifth of the moon's disk apart from each other. Um, to put it into another uh, perspective, uh, if you take your pinky and you hold it at arm's length, that distance right here represents approximately one degree. So again, it would be about one-tenth of the width of your little pinky held out at arm's length. Now, this is a fairly rare occurrence. Jupiter takes about 12 years to make one orbit of the sun. Saturn, on the other hand, takes about 30 years. So when you do the math, it works out to where Jupiter actually laps Saturn about once every 20 years. And that is when these conjunctions happen. But not every conjunction is as close as this one. And that is due to the fact that the orbits of Earth and Jupiter and Saturn are slightly angled to each other. So during certain conjunctions, they may be close together, but still a few degrees apart. In this case, they're going to be exceptionally close. The good news is you won't need a telescope to see this event. It's gonna be perfectly visible to the naked eye. Just go outside on December 21st, just after sunset and look to the west. Look for the two brightest star-like objects that you can find. Uh, they're gonna be right next to each other and very obvious. The brighter one is Jupiter. The fainter one is Saturn. In fact, to people who aren't familiar with this event, would probably look up and just pass it off as being the landing lights of an airplane or potentially a UFO. If you happen to have a pair of binoculars or even a spotting scope, by all means, grab them. Any optical aid that you can get is only going to enhance the view of what you're going to see. Even a small binocular, like a 10 by 42, uh, will actually show you the disk of Jupiter and uh, even its four Galilean moons. Saturn, on the other hand, is still going to appear as a star-like, uh, maybe even slightly elongated star, uh, because you don't have the magnification uh, required to separate the rings from the planet. I would highly recommend that you tripod mount them if you can. If this is not an option for you, then I highly recommend that you try to brace your elbows on something solid. Um, you can lean down, get on your knees behind a table, and put your elbows on top of the table to view through your, your uh, binoculars. Or if you uh, are outside in the front yard or in the driveway, you can use the hood of a car, uh, the trunk of a car, even the roof of a car. Just anything solid that is going to be able to help you eliminate the shake, because that shake can cost you detail when looking through high, higher powered binoculars. Having a telescope will definitely help. You will be able to see far more detail in both planets. Even looking through a small telescope at about 75 power magnification, You'll be able to see the methane clouds on Jupiter. You'll be able to see smaller storms. Um, you'll be able to see the Galilean moons, and you will definitely be able to separate the rings from the planet on Saturn. Most astronomers can vividly remember the first time they saw Jupiter or Saturn through the eyepiece of a telescope. For me, it was Jupiter that got me hooked into astronomy that very first night. But nothing can compare to seeing Saturn and Jupiter in the same eyepiece field through a telescope. Especially this year, they'll be close enough together that you'll be able to use higher magnification eyepieces and bring out all the glorious detail of Saturn's rings and Jupiter's cloud bands. This is definitely something that should not be missed. The date of closest approach 
between Saturn and Jupiter will occur on December 21st. But remember to keep your eyes open in the weeks leading up to this day and the weeks following, because you will actually be able to witness with your own eyes the motion of our solar system. May you have clear skies and good seeing. Peace.